All right, welcome. It's the 6th of May, 2022, at least in Asia. And we're grateful to have everybody here. Thanks very much. Agenda topics I've got for today. News, Google Summer of Code, and Chris, I think it'd probably be best if we had you be the voice on that rather than me. Uh, then She Code Africa Contributhon, I can talk to that one. Then other topics, ongoing prep for the June LTS baseline selection. I can talk to that briefly. Java 11 plan and internationalization meetup. Any other topics that anyone wants to be sure we add? Sounds good to me. Okay. All right. So this one, actually, Chris, this one is um asian language complication okay uh, that is being investigated it'll be a fun one to discuss remind me to talk through that one because um, multi-byte languages have an interesting twist on that one all right so by way of news we've got a new long-term support release it's out and the new weekly came out as well both uh, looking good and uh, running and seem well behaved. Uh, we did have a, a an upgrade guide edition after the release. Uh, thanks to Basil Crow, I like that when other people propose upgrade guide changes, and in this case, it was a change to a logging behavior change that was introduced related to uh, reducing memory pressure. So Chris, do you wanna share with us what you can publicly? Remember we're being recorded, so no saying anything you're not allowed to say. How's Google right. Summer of Code going for you as an org admin, et cetera? Where are we in the process? Okay, so we have selected a few projects we uh, would like to accept. And uh, we are already in the process of contacting and confirming with the potential mentors, uh, the supplement mentors um, about mentorship. And um, I think we are about ready to submit the names to Google. That's about it. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, and as I understand it, it will be late May before Google announce which projects worldwide have been selected. So we'll go into a quiet period. Once you've submitted, they then have to process, right? Yep. Excellent. Well, thank you for, for leading that. Thanks very much for being an organization admin. You're welcome. So the, the She Code Africa Contributhon, the inclusive naming project has had pull requests already merged. First pull requests have been merged. And the, uh, the participants have learned more about GitHub and how to use it to search and to submit pull requests. Okay. Yeah, we did a, we actually did a, I did a tutorial and showed them how to do a multi-file pull request from the GitHub web UI. Wow. I know, I know. It was like, really? That's scary. That's and, but it worked. And uh, they now have a recording of it, so they can use that. And they'll be able to use it after they're done with a Jenkins project in other areas, professionally and otherwise. Indeed. The Screenshot Updates project, we've had our first pull request merge there as well. And those, those first merged pull requests have been using Jenkins Weekly to show the most recent UI. It will be included, will be included in the June LTS because the June LTS baseline has not been selected yet. So for the moment, there are some screenshots that are outdated or that are newer than the, the LTS version that people are running. Any categorization of where they're finding the screenshots that need replacing or are they just everywhere? 
uh, we are? the things we looked the the bulk the most of them were are in the user handbook and then a few are in tutorials and what sort of issues are they needing to be replaced for just everything just that the menus menus look wrong or the plugin manager layout is incorrect okay is outdated you know if, if you took a screenshot of the plugin manager 12 months ago it's a completely different look now right right okay okay and we haven't i haven't seen any java 8 references at all so so in at least in none of the screenshots that I've, I've seen so far oh good. so this worry does not seem to be a, a significant worry excellent news so on pipeline help we today guided them to the git plugin for a very specific point of embarrassment that <laughs> that i had found so there's no check out scm examples in the git plugin docs and no credential use credentials in pipeline examples in the git plugin docs it's like oh dear shame on me so pointed them to those there is still more work we need to do to find the ways to reliably add top level house help so adding top level help to pipeline keywords in uh, in a plugin is somewhat of a black art, somewhat um, problematic, right? I'm not always able to find the exact place to put things to be able to add the help. Yeah. And I think that's one where I may have to go begging people like Daniel Beck or Jesse Glick to give me some tutorial on how does how does a plugin find its associated help file so that we know where to put it? Yeah, All right. That, okay. Now we're about one to two weeks away from the official end. So, and then we'll do a two week conclusion and final reporting. And your um, project manager is working out well too still? Oh, oh my sakes, that is wonderful. Yes, she's so great. Zenob joined the docs office hours for Europe earlier today. So yesterday, Asia time. And, and I was able to tell her, oh my sakes, yes, that project, project manager role has been just wonderful. We must be sure we do that again next year. Wonderful. Yep. Any other questions on SheCode Africa? Okay, next topic then, ongoing prep for the June LTS baseline selection. So here the story is that I had asked for a two to four week delay in the in selecting the baseline while we work on while we worked on regressions. And we're now uh, let's see we are it was April 20th. So let me do a quick math thing here. It was calendar so april 20th was the original baseline selection date so we are now officially two weeks and one day delayed so we're now inside the window but things are looking much better we hope it will be next week's release next week's the next weekly that is selected or one after that and what that would mean is the June LTS moves from June 1 to either June 22 or June 29. Any questions on that one? The big hit there is I need time to prepare the, the summary of changes because right. it's it, there are all sorts of things that need to be highlighted and indicated to people. 
I'm glad that we care more about the quality of the release than the date. Well, that was that was the thing for me is is we've we we learned by hard experience that when we made a major change like tables to divs, we had an awful lot of people who struggled with it. We hope mm -hmm. that this one will have less struggles, but it's it's the same kind of change. It's it's quite dramatic to change the UI. Right. All right. Any other questions on the June LTS? Okay, next topic then, Java 11. So today we support Java 8 and Java 11 fully with Java 17 in preview. The proposal is that September 2022 LTS will no longer support Java 8. And that means that we'll do a drop support for Java 8 in a weekly well before September. The final date has not yet been selected, but it could be as early as early as um, June. And this is words, for running Jenkins. Can they still do use Java 8 agents? Uh, well, so they don't need to use Java 8 agents. This is so this will drop support for the, the controller support would end and the agent support would end, but they can still use Java, Java 8 tools to run Java 8 compile, build and test okay. from inside an agent that's actually executing with the Java 11 JVM. Good, it's, I've run into people who got confused by this in the past. Right, and, and that's an important point we need to note to people. Look, you can build just like you can compile C code with a Jenkins agent. You can compile Java 8 code, even if the agent itself is running Java 11. Mm -hmm. All right, so date to be determined and communicated. So any questions on the require 11, Java 11 story? Nope. All right, next topic then. And this one is one, Chris, Chris for your info. Um, so okay. we've got on May 12th, a localization meetup that we'll have where we're going to look at and show how crowd in enterprise has donated a, a license to use their software there and they they host the software themselves uh, for translation support. And so what it does is it allows us to have a much better experience. Translators and proofreaders to have a much better experience working on Jenkins. And I can show, uh, did I show it last week? I don't remember, Chris, if we showed you a tour last yeah. week. Maybe I have. You say we did? Yeah. Okay, good, then no need to show it again. We did discover last week a surprise or yeah, middle of late last week, there was a surprise detected that Asian languages naturally are written by CrowdIn as UTF-8. That makes sense, right? That's, that's how we do it now. But the Jenkins property files uh, assume ISO 88591 with encoded with backslash U encoded UTF characters, UTF 8. And uh, so right now, Alex uh, Brandis is investigating what alternatives are available to make that work better. Um, we think there are possibilities like, we write a little, tra a little translator that converts UTF-8 to the encoded ISO format. The other is we could, we may need, we just wait until Java 8 support is dropped 
uh, then use new methods that are UTF-8 aware. Now, this is only for the Asian languages that use non-Roman alphabets, right? Well, so it's not or just, it, it, yeah, I guess. It apply to, what about Cyrillic? Is that affected? They are also affected, right? So, so Cyrillic is affected. Um, the Hebrew, the Hebrew characters are affected. Any, yeah, anybody who uses a, a non ISO 88591 encoding and ISO 88591 is actually a relatively narrow set of Western European character sets. Okay. So we think there's, we, we can see, we think we can see a solution. It's not clear which solution, but we can see a way to solve it that will let us use this tool for, for Chinese language, which is simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Russian, Hebrew, etc. Any questions there? Um, do we just for nitpicking? So, do we want to call this Asian language, or do we want to call it languages that use non-Roman alphabets or something? Yeah, so I'd actually call it UTF-8 because it's it's really yeah non ISO 8859-1. Mm. If we're going to be going to be precise. It's because it's not, and it's not anything about the different syntax of the languages. It's just the character sets. It isn't right, and it's not about whether they read left to right or right to left, right? It's be, it's just if they're using something that's not an ISO eighty eight fifty nine one character set, whatever that is, whether that's Greek or uh, katakana or the Korean Hangul, you know, any one of those, it would still have yeah. the same kind of problem. All right, those are the topics I had. Any other topics we want to bring? You're not volunteering one topic, so I, that's the answer, which is fine. I'm, I'm actually- We don't even need to mention it. <laughs> I apologize, but we can talk about old, old PRs if you'd like. Right now, I don't have any story to tell on them. And I haven't been reviewing them. I'm too buried in other stuff. So, right. That's 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 been my feeling. Is I've got projects right now that are certainly keeping me hopping. It's a, like anything. I, something that I wonder about is when we get through like GSOCs. We've got the She Code Africa, and then we've got GSOC. And is there ever a time like this fall where we could call a special meeting and invite a lot of people who don't normally come to this? And go through we've got an awful lot of open prs that are very old there and well and triage them and see if we could get rid of some of them well actually i think that's a that's a good task eventually for kevin kevin martins to ah. to take on and say hey help us do a triage of of the triage and close or and re revise or close the outdated pull requests because We've got some that are potentially useful, but haven't yet finished. And then the question is, is it easier to finish them or abandon them and, and close them and bring them back? Right. The, the embarrassment for me is we've got one pull request that's from September of 2019. So we're, I'm clearly not keeping up. We know, but under your, we used to have a whole bunch that were from um, 2019. So if we're down to just one, you've done some work. Well, we've got three still. And okay. here again, and actually one of those is, is related internationalization. I may crack that one. That's a good one. Ah. Because it was trying to move information from international on internationalization from the wiki to Jenkins.io. It may be worth trying to see, hey, can I get this? And it's got some feedback. Good. Okay. Okay. Good work. Anything else? Chris, anything from you? Nope. All right. Well, I'd propose let's call it done. And I may actually take this opportunity and go through 
the uh, this pending pull request, resolve the conflicts, and see if I could get it over the line prior to prior to the uh, that internationalization session. Yeah, cool. And then, oh, and then we're going to have to update it for the new tools, aren't we? Well, that's that's part of the benefit here is knowing that this thing's available. It may be that the ideal thing is I use it. I've got several plugins I need to internationalize. Follow the instructions here as a way to test, and then having internationalized, then we go go ahead and we've proved it works, and we publish it. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Hey, we'll everybody. Call Have a great week. Yes. Thank you very much. We will talk next week. See you next week. Mm -hmm.